Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I had a subscriber ask a question, which I will flip in here for you guys. And it is basically a 17-year-old who is asking questions about dieting, and I see some immediate red flags and problems here uh, that I want to highlight. And obviously, I've hidden their identity because they are underage. Let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right, uh, this is one of the things that really concerns me that I see with this community today, uh, and kind of the online fitness world is this promotion promotion of leanness and being ripped at any cost, and the potential negative consequences that it has to young people. Uh, because I want people to step back and look at this and think about everything we know about human nutrition, growth, and development. Look at the fact that you have a 17-year-old now, young men are not done growing and developing until around age 20 or 21, okay? Your organs, your bones, everything else continue to grow until you are 20 to 21 years old. What's the fastest way to stunt growth, to stunt development, even stunt brain development? Malnutrition. Now, this individual is 156 pounds and has been dieting and says he needs to diet four more weeks. All right. 156 pounds is a totally healthy body weight for any young man, almost irrespective of height, unless they're tall. I mean, even if this person is like 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, 156 pounds is a totally normal, healthy body fat. Now, this person's also been lifting weights, apparently, or they wouldn't be on this channel. They wouldn't be asking these questions. So he probably has at least a few pounds of muscle gain. I bet you at least 5 to 10 pounds of muscle gain from lifting weights. You factor that in. This is a person who's probably dieting to uh, relatively low body fat because, again, leanness has been promoted. And he's also uh, displaying some of a freaking out of accidentally fluctuating calories from day to day and needing to be aware of it. Teenagers needing to be aware of caloric fluctuations. Um, and and it, this is what we need to talk about here is the potential for eating disorders, body image disorders, and damage to your body over time. Now, uh, I don't always talk about this a lot, and I haven't talked about this a, a long time in young people like this who are dieting and the potential problems with it, uh, simply because I just haven't. It's something I've covered in the past, hasn't come back up until someone asks me a question. And normally lately, again, I've been noting to people that obesity is a larger overall health crisis in this country and in Western countries than getting too lean. And so people say, so why do you harp on the leanness at all? Because this community has a predisposition in the other direction. Uh, obviously, the obesity is only more of a problem because more people do it. It's not any more dangerous. And that's what people need to understand. Getting excessively lean can be just as dangerous to your health as morbid obesity. And when we have young men doing this who are not obese, who are not obese, you need to understand malnutrition and again, eating in a caloric deficit, losing weight while your organs are growing, your brain is still developing, your bones are still growing, can absolutely stunt your development for the rest of your life. Okay, this can affect uh, potentially your intelligence potential, your cognitive ability, uh, your reproductive system, how tall you get. A bunch of dieting when you're still in your teens could cost you a half inch or an inch of, of height growth. All right, you could end up being slightly shorter as a result of this. And now I'm assuming this person is at a fairly short height. If this person is six foot tall or higher, they're now emaciated. They're emaciated and they probably need to be seeing a counselor. Uh, but here's the thing. People need to understand dieting down like this when you're a teenager is potentially going to cause you long-term health risk. And a perfect example, I know someone I used to know, um, one of my ex's sister, used to diet down to make weight in wrestling in high school. She suffered reproductive system problems well into her 20s. All right, major problems as a result of that. And the doctors said it was a result of her short-term starvation multiple times throughout the year while she was wrestling in high school. All right, it, it affected the development of her reproductive system in a very negative way. And young men, you need to understand that's going to affect your reproductive system, your testicles, your penis, things like that can be, um, you could have developmental uh, problems there as a result of that. All right, you need to be aware of these things. You could affect your hormone levels uh, going well later into life. You could end up having low testosterone coming up in your 20s as a result of too much dieting. 
you don't need to be in a caloric deficit if you're a teenager unless you are obese. And now people say, well, shouldn't there be health risks? If someone's obese, aren't they going to suffer potential health risks as well from doing this? Yes, they can. Uh, but the answer is twofold in nature. Number one, they have an inner, bigger energy reserve to tap into. Your body, when you carry extra body fat, is simply less likely to draw resources from other places if you have a modest caloric deficit. All right, if you're not losing weight too quickly and you're fat, truly fat, and I'm talking you're more than 20 pounds overweight, like your BMI is 20 pounds over, you're 20 pounds over the normal BMI, you go plug it into a calculator for height versus weight, you can probably safely lose weight with less risk of these things happening. The risk isn't non-existent, but it's a lower risk than someone who's at a healthy body fat and healthy body weight who decides to start losing weight while they're still developing because you have a little bit extra cushion to work with. You have an energy reserve. All right. Uh, makes a big difference. Also, the long-term health risk of being obese are going to outweigh the risk of someone who's obese losing weight. So if someone is a teenager and they are obese, doing a, you know, a little stricter dieting and doing more exercise to lose weight, particularly if, they're, particularly if they're doing it more through more physical activity and less through attempting to starve themselves, um, and they're following some basic good nutrition guidelines, they're simply going to be healthier in the long term if they address it as a teenager and develop good health practices versus if they just stay obese through their teens and, and go into adulthood in that way. So what we're looking at here with obese teenagers, there is uh, a long-term health implication that it's more positive for them to go ahead and lose the weight in a safe manner through being more physically active, slightly improving their diet, uh, and developing good habits than the risks that they're going to suffer of potential developmental problems uh, as a result of dieting. But mainly it's because the obesity risk actually present a, a big long-term health problem. So they're, they're fixing one problem while taking a smaller risk because the risk is smaller because they're obese. However, on the other hand, people who are at a normal healthy body weight and they're teenagers and they start dieting, they don't have that extra cushion to work with. Uh, they don't have that extra padding to work with, that wiggle room because of the extra energy reserves in their body. They are more likely uh, to stunt development of organs, bones, things like that. They're more likely to do so because they don't have an extra energy reserve to work with. Uh, and ultimately, at risk, again, like I said, developmental issues, hormonal issues, everything else, height issues in the long term. But furthermore, it starts to establish a mentality that can contribute to long-term eating disorders and body image disorders. Meaning if teenagers are already, and this is a problem with girls, it's now becoming a problem with boys only because of this whole physique culture and this idea of needing to be ripped has created this in young men. It was a problem that was bad enough with young girls. Now it's drifting over the other direction to men too, or boys, I should say. And uh, it creates a predisposition towards body image disorders coming up into their, their later years because they're starting to become obsessed with this now at a younger age while their their outlook on life and their self-identity is still developing. So they're gonna they're starting when you're focusing on this to say, oh, I need to die, I need to do this and that, you're following through with a plan of action that is going to contribute, and this is a harmful plan of action, mind you, that has potential health risks, um, that in the long term is establishing a pattern in their in their mind while their identity is still forming because teenagers do not know who they are. Uh, anyone can say what they want who's a teenager now, trust me, you have no idea who you are. You're still learning and deciding who you are as a person, uh, how you identify with yourself. Um, this is a bad habit starting. Now, other people are going to say, well, I can't believe you say that because what about bodybuilders? Most of the best bodybuilders in the world had to start as teenagers. Uh, bodybuilding isn't healthy. Competitive bodybuilding isn't healthy, and if you're starting an absurdly unhealthy lifestyle, uh, the whole bodybuilding world is obsessed with drugs, partying, uh, prostitution, everything else. That is what the bodybuilding world competitively revolves around. That's what that culture revolves around. So you're telling me that we should be advising teenagers to get involved in an unhealthy lifestyle now so that they can be exposed to all this stuff later? and develop an even more unhealthy lifestyle, I don't follow the logic there. Because this is a fitness channel, this isn't a bodybuilding channel. We're talking about fitness, longevity, health, athleticism. Bodybuilding has nothing to do with that. So no, we shouldn't care that 
a bunch of pro bodybuilders who were injecting $30,000 of drugs into their body every year, going out partying on party drugs all the time, selling their bodies to other men uh, in order to pay for their drugs. We shouldn't care that those guys started in their teens. That shouldn't be an encouragement uh, to teenagers to get involved in that lifestyle. So it always shocks me when people go there and it just blows my mind that that is even an argument against this. Uh, that's an insane argument. That is an argument in the other direction saying, no, absolutely, you're right. Since all these bodybuilders started it young, got involved in their horrific lifestyle young, that, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, we definitely shouldn't be encouraging teenagers to do this because you don't want to set them down that path. And that's the problem. Too many of those pro bodybuilders got that obsession and that dream when they were teenagers before they knew the reality of that world. And then it became their most important life goal and they threw everything they had into it. And then they get trapped into that lifestyle. So yeah, I think the best thing we could possibly do is to push teenagers away from getting involved in that life. Uh, because it's not going to be constructive or helpful for them in any way to do so. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.